gentlemen, we got two special guests here on the Just Acting Up show. Round of applause for Dave McLean and Sharose Khan. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. For sure, for sure. Hey, man. Thank if you. My, uh, if uh, my voice is a little bit on the horse side today, you'll have to forgive me. I am just getting over the COVID. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I just saw that, man. And how, how you feeling? Mm -hmm. Are you, I mean, I know you Actually, said I'm... I'm feeling great. I am feeling best I've felt since before I started having symptoms. Yeah. You know, like I said, my voice is uh, a little bit hoarse, but other than that, I'm in the pink. Good, good, yeah. good. I'm so sick of this stupid thing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so sick of it. But, um, but man, uh, well, before we really get into this interview, um, we want to tell both of you guys happy belated birthday. Again, I know you both. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. When, when was that. your Shiroz? It was on the 18th, so on Monday. Okay. My uh, mine was the fifth, just a couple of weeks before that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. July is the best month. <laughs> Absolutely. Some of the best people I know are boner in July. <laughs> 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 so you hear that, James, right? That means May and September is out of there. I guess we are. Not at all. <laughs> both, both my kids were born in September, man. Okay, well, we're good then in September. Yeah, we're, we're good. good. We're good in September. May, I'm just the one odd yeah, man out on this one. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, my, my brother's born in May, so I'll give you something there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. It works. Give, give some love for me. It works, man. What, uh, Sharose, what did you do for your birthday, man? Uh, I mean, nothing too crazy. I actually, a few of my friends also have July birthdays. So, and then we, we decided instead of doing like separate dinners for each person, we just did like a little group thing, just a group dinner. So got it out of the way, you know, but uh, it was fun. Nice. So yeah, nothing too wild. Good. Good. Sometimes those are the best birthdays. So we just simple and just enjoy friends and family, man. So that's good. Yeah. yeah good, good. I mean there was a rooftop on the restaurant we went to, so like we went up and like we pretty much took over the whole <laughs> rooftop. That was fun. <laughs> That's always fun. <laughs> Dave, what about you? What did you do for your uh your birthday? Well, I, I had kind of a belated birthday celebration this year because my family had a trip planned to Las Vegas. So um we were out there from the uh ninth to the twelfth and uh had a uh, birthday dinner for me at um, Sinatra, which is a four-star restaurant in the uh, Wynn Encore complex. We've, we've been there before, and it, it's it's a beautiful restaurant, great food. We had a real nice time there as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I would, I would have liked to say I brought home some roulette winnings from Vegas, but I'm afraid we all all we brought back is COVID because oh. Uh, oh, yeah. my wife started feeling symptoms during the trip. She tested the night we came back. She had it. Um, mild symptoms, thankfully, we're both double vaxxed and boosted. Uh, and I tested negative five days after she was testing positive. But then a couple of days later, I was positive. But fortunately, uh, my symptoms were even lighter than hers. I took a Paxlovid and another medication the VA hooked me up with, and it started working almost immediately. So, yeah, mm. I'm 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 feeling actually a lot better than I even sound right now. Good. Well, glad that you are, you're feeling better. Glad you're feeling better, and I'm glad you were able to enjoy your both of you to enjoy your you know birthdays, your born days, man. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. No problem, man. So uh, let's let's go ahead and get into it. So this the same question for both of you. Um, what got you started in this crazy world, this journey of acting? Um, well, Dave, we'll start off with you. Well, uh, like most people, I started off in theater. My first play was in 1981. I'll let you do the math on that. Um, you know, school plays, and then it uh, continued with community theater into adulthood, even while I was in the Army. I did Army Community Theater. Um, won some awards along the way, got to perform at the National Theater Festival once because one of our plays won its, its region in the American Association of Community Theaters. And uh, then I got a little bit into writing and directing some, uh, some church plays and videos, a bunch of other things like that. And then, uh, then I just got too busy with life. I was raising two kids as a single dad. Uh, I was trying to finish up my army career strong, had three deployments towards the end of my career. Uh, and then when I got out of the army, I told my wife, I, 
you know, everybody's like, what are you going to do in retirement? And I said uh, a couple different things. Uh, but I told my wife I wanted to try and transition into screen acting. And she was supportive. Uh, but she said, you know, you're, you're a very strong writer, too. You should pursue that. And so I did. But I was also dabbling and trying to get cast. And I, I did. I got lucky right out of the box. I got the first thing I submitted for. It was a paid gig in a short film. First time I'd ever made money acting in my life. I was loving it. Uh, my wife has this wonderful picture. She got to be on set because we were shooting in a hotel lobby. I was a hotel manager. And she got this picture of me while we were setting up the take. I was just behind the desk looking up at the lights. And I love that picture because I know exactly what I was thinking. I was like, this is so cool. I hope I get to do this again. But if I don't, I'm sucking in every minute of this. And I did start getting cast more and more. And so I said, well, I got, <laughs> this might happen for me. I got to start, start yeah. taking this seriously. And uh, I, um, I started taking acting classes, found out the things you got to do to be a pro. I got headshots. I, I took everything and anything I was offered as far as film and TV and built a reel, built up my presence online. And all that started just six years ago this month. I've oh, now done over 140 screen acting jobs in that time, over 80 films in there. Um, including some very recently and some I got coming up that I guess we can talk about later, but that's, yeah. that's kind of the quick overall summary. I, I did my first gig two days after my 50th birthday. So I knew I had, uh, knew I had some catching up to do. And so I just completely poured myself in it, that and my voiceover. I've been, I've been working really hard, caught some breaks along the way, met a lot of wonderful people like yeah. you guys got to work with you, build each other up and uh, just, just been loving it, man. Loving it. Quite a journey, quite a journey, man. So yeah. Uh, Charles, same question for you. What got you started in this, uh, this crazy world, man? So uh, mine's not as amazing as, you know, Dave's uh, whole well, I'm origin just story. Than you. That's <laughs> Dave's <laughs> Don't you hate, you got to go behind that off. <laughs> like, like, like Dave would just, <laughs> Trumps all of us and everything we have Yeah, look, I was just born in 1997, okay? I don't have that history. <laughs> but but uh, uh, so basically, uh, after graduating high school, uh, I didn't really exactly know what major I want to do in college or, you know, I didn't have like a, you know, uh, a lot of people, they are set on what they want to do, like going into college. They know what they like, what they don't like. They have a set path. But for me, I never really thought like, oh, oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an accountant. I want to be this and this, whatever. I was just like going with the flow, honestly. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't fully like my heart wasn't fully in that side of the world. Uh so I was trying to think of, you know, things that I enjoy doing, like, what are my passions? Because I didn't even know, honestly. So I was like, like literally sitting down, writing a list of uh, things that I enjoy and things that could, I, uh, that I could pick up as hobbies or passions uh, because I just wasn't aware of any. So I was writing that could, uh, I was writing things that could potentially have like uh, futures. And so I was writing things like, uh, basketball, video games, uh, streaming, just like random things. And then uh, I remembered that in high school, I used to make uh, short films just for fun for these uh, annual competitions with uh, my friends. We uh, made just, you know, just random little uh, videos. And I remembered that I really enjoyed doing it. And I had a fun time uh, in the whole filmmaking process, even though that was like fully like just kid stuff, like high schoolers uh but i was like okay uh maybe this could have some sort of potential you know so i figured that out and i started researching you know how to be an actor uh and how to uh get started in this business so when i was researching i ended up finding this uh independent film that was casting for uh background extras uh just as students so i ended up applying uh just to see what happens and uh i ended up uh getting cast for one of the background roles 
So I show up on set. It's my first time ever doing anything like this. And it was a actually like a decently budgeted uh, independent film too. It had like a few Disney actors and uh, people from Twilight. So it was pretty, mm. uh, it was pretty a, a big thing for me. I was like very amazed. So we get on set and uh, I'm just supposed to be like one of the students in the background, like standing around. But when the, when the scene comes up, uh, the director pulls me out randomly and she's like, we're going to give you a featured scene. And uh, they made me like uh, stand right by the two main actors. And it was like some slow motion, like hallway scene. So I basically ended up getting like full screen time. And uh, the next day I came back and that ended up happening again. Like the director pulled me out and uh, she made me sit right by the main actors. So I was, I basically, I got screen time and I got like bumped up basically. So after that happened, I was thinking like, wow, like this is my first ever like job uh, and I'm getting like bumped up. So basically I took it as a sign. I was like, you know what, like, if this happened already, like what might happen like going forward? So why not give it an actual chance and uh, actually mm -hmm. go for it? So from then on, like I took that sign and I just decided like, okay, I'm going to pursue this because I did really enjoy it. Like it was something very fun to me. So that's yeah. what uh, something also that was uh, attractive about it. So I took that and uh, I just ran with it and uh, I just started building up from there and just, you know, uh, trying to improve myself. And that's where I'm at now still, just still building myself up. Uh, doing the best quality projects uh, and getting the most opportunities as I can and just, uh, you know, uh, going after the dream. Well, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with Shiroz before a few times now, and I got to tell you, he's, he's great on set and just a, a wonderful guy to hang around. When, when I find out I get to uh, work with him again, I literally get a smile on my face. I always like being around this guy. Uh, same thing you, with you, James. You. I got to say, same thing oh, with you. Man, thank you so much. Thank you, man. And both both stories are, are amazing, man. And talk about Shiro's being at the right place at the right time, man. That's mm. that's that's because we, you know, like you both said for all four of us, it's, you know, that opportunity, that window, or just showing up. And we're, you're just, when you're taking it all in, and I'm pretty sure, you know, all, all of us had that moment and Shiro's with the story you just told me of mm -hmm. like, okay, this is happening. And you just, <laughs> you just yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. It's a beautiful story. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Shiro, so you did a uh, driving PSA commercial. Yeah. Yes. Drunk and buzzard, buzz. What was it? A drunk driving yeah. awareness uh, commercial? Yeah, right? so it was basically like a like a a, PS, a PSA type uh, commercial, but uh, more like you know a little comedic. Uh, but basically, it was about uh, how you shouldn't be uh, drunk driving or buzz driving. You know, one of those like uh, ad types. So, but that was cool because uh, it was airing on uh, NBC and Peacock and like ESPN and uh, it was a national commercial. So uh, it was pretty cool because uh, sometimes I would turn on the TV or uh, if I'm watching like uh, a game or Peacock or anything and it would just randomly pop up and I would have like friends like uh, send me videos like, oh, like we see you, like that's crazy. Like, so that's uh, always such a, like kind of a surreal thing to me, like just seeing yourself like pop up like that. So that was mm -hmm. very, uh, a very cool thing. Right, right. And the, and the Netflix show, I'm sorry, and the Netflix show called Special, and you also did a, a Sonic commercial, too. Now, with the Sonic commercial, do, did they feed you Sonic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Everything was just plastic. Oh. No, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 they did, they did. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, they were like... Uh, whatever you want, honestly, the whole menu was just like, oh, you want it? Go ahead, just tell them. Uh, so that was really cool. I didn't need to, you know, I didn't need to get lunch that day or like bring lunch or anything. Can you come back? That's the real question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I now I so the fast food commercial. It's like, do you know who I am? I just did a commercial for you guys. <laughs> yeah, now every time I go to the Sonic and drive through, I'm like, and they're like, oh, it's you. Okay, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool, man. That's hilarious, man. Beautiful work, man. So thank you, thank you. Oh man, yeah. So, um, Dave, you 
like, has it been, you said it was 20 years of acting, correct? 40, 40. If, if you count, yeah, if you count, you count the first theater stuff in, in school, it's been over 40 years for me now. Yeah, I, and dude, that is crazy, because I know I met, it was a couple years ago, when I met you, I first met you at the Mixer, and you mm -hmm. had your um your vet hat on, and I, and I was like, who is this guy? And, you know, you was just so nice and welcoming and cool and i think i just talked to you for a good minute and when you told me how many projects you were a part of that year and you say you were trying to reach a certain goal how do you i mean i know you set up everything type it in but what is yeah yeah, it's yeah man like dude like it's your resume i'm just like that's ridiculous what has been one of your most favorite and challenging scenes or roles what one what's one of them that you can think. Well, uh, a few come to mind. I'll, I'll try to keep it short because I, I'm very passionate about this stuff. I love talking right. about it. Um, and I, I know it can come off as self-centered sometime or whatever, but it, it honestly is just sharing my passion and my joy yeah. for the things I, I'm able to do. When I'm telling people stuff, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not thinking, look at me. I'm thinking, can you believe I got to do this stuff? <laughs> um, right. I, I think I'd start by talking about my first lead role in a short, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was called The Other Side of the Door. Mm -hmm. It was a thriller, and I played uh, the the father in this post post apocalyptic world. They don't really explain what happened to the world, but mm -hmm. we're living out in the middle of the woods. It's me, my daughter, and my father. We think we're all alone. And then some weird stuff starts happening. We realize there's somebody else out there and we're scared. We don't know who it is. And it turns out uh, the person on the other side of the door was a little boy who was also on his own. Wow. And uh, it, what was great about the shoot and so challenging about it was we were living in the middle of the woods. So we were out in the middle of the woods, three solid days up till then the longest I'd ever been on set. And we were, we were cold, we were wet, we were hot, sweating, and I was loving every minute of it. We were dirty. Yeah. Uh, first thing I did after I got on set, I got in the costume and the AD's like, okay, I got dirty you up now. And she's rubbing dirt on me and everything. And, uh, and that short went on to win first place in its festival. Wow. So, nice, nice. um, you know, since I was the lead, I, I think uh, I must not have messed it up too bad is the way I look at it. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm why they won. I'm saying, uh, okay, I must have done my job okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, not to be too salacious, but another role that I considered a, a real win and I'm very proud of was a naturist comedy I did in 2020 mm. that was called Disrobed. And... Naturist is a naturism is a lifestyle in which people just do everything else everybody does that they can in public, but they're not wearing clothes. And this, yeah, and this was this was a Zoom movie shot actually over Zoom because it was 2020, and our cast was scattered all over the country. And it was about a naturist family meeting their new son-in-law for the first time, and. He did not know he was marrying into a family of naturists. And his fiance, my daughter, springs it on him at the last minute. And so he's expected to disrobe like the rest of us and act like he's one of us because she has told us that about him. And so it's a comedy that centers around his uncomfortability with the naturist lifestyle and us yeah. trying to make him feel more comfortable than when, of course, it's revealed that he's been lied to. and how uncomfortable he is. There's some healing that has to take place there. There's, in, in case anybody's not familiar with naturism, there is nothing sexual about it. And right. believe it or not, there's yeah. nothing sexual about the film. You do, you do see us all full frontal at times, but it is a family. And one of the best comments we got from audience members, it, it, it had several online appearances, pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And I remember one person wrote, Halfway through, I forgot everybody was naked because I was just so into the story. Wow. And, and that was what it was meant to be. It wasn't meant to be something to excite people. It was meant to be something to introduce people to 
a different way of life and a way of life that is real for many, many people around the world mm -hmm. and to have an entertaining family comedy. And honestly, that's, that's what it was. I'm hoping that gets a wider release going forward because it has had a lot of positive feedback. Um, and then the one I just finished, I'm also very proud of, not out yet. It's called, um, it's called Aged. It's the biggest role I've had to date. Um, it's a horror feature, A-G-E-D, in case I didn't pronounce it well. Um, I play a guy who's desperate to try to hire just the right housekeeper for his aging mother who lives alone. See, I've got a family of my own. I don't live with her and I've been taking care of her. I need somebody. And so I get this young woman to take the job. And because it's a horror movie, soon after she shows up, weird stuff starts happening. Of course. And I don't want to give too much away, but I will tell you this. <laughs> it's, it's got a wicked twist ending that I guarantee you nobody is going to see coming. But it's not a cheap twist. We've seen those in horror movies. You're, you, yeah. you know, you get the twist and you're like, what the heck? Come on. Yeah. When you see this twist, it's one that makes total sense. As soon as it happens, you're like, oh, that's what was going on the whole time. And he's and hers and she's and this. And it's just, it's wild. And we have a great cast. Uh, it is going to get out there on some kind of streamer because Gravitas Ventures has already picked it up as a distributor. They've supplied some of the money. They've given the director a little bit more money so we can do um, reshoot a couple scenes that he wants to just make a little bit better. Right. And uh, we're hoping it's going to be out in time for Halloween, but because of the reshoots, I can't guarantee that at this point. Gotcha. And, and I've got, I got three or four features coming up this fall. We can talk about later if you want, but um, you, you say, which roles are you proudest of? I'd say, I'd say probably those three. And one that I probably would have added to the list if it hadn't fallen through is I got cast to play Charles Manson in a short film. Oh, wow. And that's how I got the beard. See, most of my acting career so far, I've, I've sported a goatee. Yeah. Well, when I got the Manson film, I grew in my beard and I had a full Manson beard, all kind of mm. crazy shit. I even got some headshots with it just to memorialize it. I was on the hook for that for a year until the director finally gave up finding his perfect location mm. and all that work uh and you know i worked hard on my manson impression i got the role i was ready to go but in the time i was waiting to do this thing i had the beard and i was still getting bookings mm -hmm. and people were telling me i like this look for you so i just trimmed it back to look at less less crazy and uh at least for the time being i'm keeping the beard Anyway, sorry, that was probably a longer answer than you liked. No, but, uh, no, that's, no, no. Like no, I said, I'm, no, no, it was I'm passionate about this stuff. So, yeah. you know, if you, if you want to talk about the upcoming projects later, that'd be great. But I, I need to take a I need to take a breather and let Chiro's talk, for goodness sake. <laughs> no, no, you're good, man. <laughs> no, you're good, because that, that was going to be my, my next question, or our next question for Chiro's will, too. And that, that's amazing. We know both of you have done some amazing work. And, and you know, like... um. Wow, that's 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 awesome, man. And you know, well, Charles, same question for you, man. What's what's the most rewarding and challenging uh, film or project you've been a part of, man? Well, I'd okay. say honestly, a relatively recent one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Above the Ground, uh, yeah. and the reason why, yeah, that's actually it's uh, going to uh, film festivals in New York currently. Yeah. So looking forward to that. But uh, the reason why is because that uh, it was also during COVID. So and it was a small like uh, skeleton crew type. So uh, it was very, you know, we were doing a lot of the, the, the research for it and the, the work for it ourselves. Uh, we were it was a lot of night shoots. So we were out in these random like uh, shady type locations like under bridges, like uh, just middle of nowhere. Uh, fields because uh, it's like a sci-fi type of uh, vibe mm -hmm. so it that it, it took and there were a lot of like reshoots for it uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things you know in like filmmaking a lot of like things happen you know like uh, yeah. scenes uh, they mess up like uh, audio files don't get recorded and it's just things like that so because of that there were a lot of reshoots uh, a lot of uh, script work uh lines being uh, updated and things like that 
so it took a while to get my fully completed. Uh, I'd say about a, a year uh, uh, tops total. Uh, but seeing it all come together and the uh, direction of the director, uh, his name is Sean Lawless, uh, and the the whole tone of it is something that uh, was very uh, uh, intriguing and attractive to me because I'm a fan of sci-fi, uh, suspense, uh, mystery, uh, this type of stuff. So that was the full uh, vibe of that, very ominous. And uh, in that movie, I'm playing a, a basically like a detective who's searching for his missing wife. And going through that, uh, uh, the whole story unfolds and uh, you find out what's actually going on and what the reasoning is. And uh, it's kind of like a cliffhanger type of ending. So uh, part two, we'll see, uh, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I'd say definitely that was one of the most uh, challenging, but also very uh, rewarding uh, films to me because uh, it was just very something very I, I enjoyed a lot. But also I did uh, this uh, short film with uh, Ike, uh, the director of The Red Box previously. Yeah. Uh, it was called Sing Off, and there I played a. <laughs> yeah, he Dave, did Dave so knows. great in that. I saw pieces <laughs> of it, man. I saw it. Man. Yeah, it was like a like a thirty minute episode, basically, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like an American Idol, The Voice type of uh, singing show, and I played the host on it. So that was very fun to me because I've never done hosting or anything like that in real life before. So I was really. Uh, to prepare for that role i was watching like american idol episodes and just researching you know how, how these uh tv hosts like how what what their personality is like like you know they're like loud they're like they have a presence basically mm -hmm. so i was just trying to learn about that and uh try to adopt those sort of like personality traits to uh make myself fit in as best as possible uh so it was very fun uh the movie came out great uh it was very funny very good quality everyone else did a good job dave did a great job uh i just and, had a uh, tiny part i was glad to be in there yeah. with you, but I, I enjoyed watching that whole thing man and you were a big part of it thank you thank you yeah so that was also very uh a memorable thing for me yeah good man oh go ahead mike well i have a just a, just a simple question. What would be your dream role um, that you would like to do? Like, like this is this is what I've been wanting to do since I started my career. Um, you know, because we all got something that is like, oh, if you want to be a superhero, or you want to be in a, um, I don't know, like another horror film or anything like that. Like, what would be your dream role that you would love to do? For me, it's always been marvel like i'm mm -hmm. i've been a i'm a huge comic book fan uh, ever since i was a kid i have like uh spider-man posters and like uh like a bunch of like comics that's just all over so i'm like a huge uh superhero movie fan so marvel has always been my number one like of all time dream mm -hmm. and uh but, uh honestly anything in, in in one of their shows one of their movies but that is what i'm aiming for that's like top of the top like my number one goal so uh i think Marvel i've come like the super bowl of acting <laughs> yeah yeah i mean at, at least to me i know some people have preferences people don't like uh superhero movies uh i think people like celebrities were coming out like recently or like last year saying oh like marvel isn't like actual film uh, or cinema but uh you know i don't really care about all that like yeah like you know it's marvel <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> marvel but, uh, <laughs> right but yeah definitely number one would be marvel and i've come i've had uh opportunities uh where i've come close but uh you know uh you just got to keep pushing and yeah. uh just keep going and uh no matter what, you know, because, you know, life is too short. Uh, if, this, if you have certain goals you want to reach, you have to go after it regardless of anything because obstacles are going to come up at, no matter what for anyone, whether that be with like career, like jobs, just like yeah. anything in life. But uh, that's always been my thing. I don't want to have regrets when I'm older. I don't want to look back and say, oh, like, I wish I should have. I, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. Like, I don't want to 
do that because that's one of my fears. So I, I, with me, it's always been, if I want to do something, I have to do it. Like I had no, no matter what issues come in the way, like I'm going to force my way around it and just, you know, find a way to do it. And that's what I tell people too. Like, if you have a passion like that, just go for it no matter what, like, cause we all have limited time. So make the most of it with something you enjoy rather than, you know, just being stuck in, uh, a sort of like cycle you know of repetitiveness uh so yeah i know that's a little off topic of the question no, no, but uh no, you're good. You're no that's right on topic man and, and we talk about it all the time and you know thanks for sharing that that too as well i was um i was on that before day before you asked asked to answer the question um did you watch Cap, uh miss marvel Rose? did you watch it Yes, yes. I yeah, that know. popped in right. That yeah, because oh, yeah. we thinking the same thing. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I just too. I love what they're doing. I mean, all I love what you know, majority of TV shows and film are doing right now, showing representation and everything. And I know that you know, I just like let me get your opinion on them finally bringing in this character of you know, this yeah, character, this race. So I, I love right. seeing that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's very that was very cool to me because it's like. Yeah. You know, the industry, this is how the industry, like, for everyone is going to get better with, like, yeah. steps like this. So yes, it's a major, like, a stepping stone going forward for, like, yes. all of us, you know, minorities and the whole uh, industry in general. Right. 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 I agree. I agree. So, Dave, uh, bring us on home with this question, man. What's one role that you have not done yet that you would love to do? Well, I, I'm kind of... I'm kind of hoping to get the lead in the uh, James Joffrey and biopic. Hey, man. You we know, can make I that. Want to, like, <laughs> I want to do when I grow yeah. up, man. Hey, man, we, we'll make it I'll happen, man. On that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm going to gonna give you a break. I'm going to give you a short answer on this one. I don't have one. Um, really? I just love the work. And even though I've had some lead roles and I love the lead roles, um, I'm mainly a character actor yeah. and people seem to think I'm fairly versatile. So even though I've mainly yes, done dramas, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've also done uh, horror films. I've done comedies within the dramas. I've played dads, cops, businessmen, um, all sorts of different characters. And I love all of them. If, if there were a favorite role, or a role that I'd be shooting for, it would be more of a type of role, even though I, I love the comedy and the horror and the villains and all that. I want to play the kind of role that breaks your heart, the kind of role that touches people, that makes them think, that makes them want to be a better person, that wants to make the world better. Even though my character maybe the bad guy or maybe the victim or you know whatever i'm playing i want to be have a role in a movie that would have that kind of effect on people not just entertain but inform and inspire um i know that sounds like a damn miss america uh, no it's good no honestly no, that's no, how, no that's a that's, a, that's, that's how a, i view yeah. it and, and, and honestly i'm kind of disappointed because i would love to see that charles manson I'm, I'm, I'm just, hey, I'm, yeah. I'm hurt, it's, I'm hurt. Because one of my favorite TV shows on Netflix, and a lot of people sleep on that, is Mine Hunters. I love mm. Mine Hunters. That's um, I have seen Mine Hunters when I was doing my, uh, when I was doing my research for the Manson role. Uh, yeah. Somebody recommended Mine Hunters, and I found that episode, and that guy was great in that season two. Oh yeah, that guy was, yeah, he was spot on. Right. Yeah, but mine was. Mine would have been a little bit different. I'll say would have been because it still could happen someday. The guy still likes me for the role. If he ever finds the location he's looking for. Um, and this is a fictional take on Ma Ma uh, Manson's life in which he were, in which he was released from prison early because of prison overcrowding. Mm. But instead mm. of going back to his old tricks, he decides to try to fly under the radar and live a quiet life, minding his own business in the middle of nowhere. So he gets this broken down rural house on a street nobody travels on, but by coincidence, his next door neighbor is an active hitman. 
Oh, wow. Mm. So they end up meeting. And even though Manson's not up to anything at that point, he's still Manson. And when they meet and have a drink, the, I don't want to give anything away in case it happens. Let's just say the hit, that Manson's character turns out to be a mirror held up to the hitman's face, making him look at his own life and what he wants to do going forward. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's a really cool concept. And, uh, that that scene I'm describing would be really great if we ever get to film it. So maybe someday it still might happen. Let's cross our fingers for this. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Sure. Cross our fingers for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but as far as bad guys go, I got a doozy coming up. Uh, you know, if, if you do want to talk about future projects. Oh yeah, well we we'll, we'll talk about that. And um, let me see how much. Time. A few more things, and of course we'll talk about you guys' uh, future projects uh, before we close. So. We know you two are a part of the Red Box, and from the clip that I've seen, you guys spend a little time with each other. You don't got to give the, you don't have to spoil it for us. But let's talk about, you know, um, a little bit of your characters on the Red Box. Or before we talk about that, on set shenanigans between you two. (laughs) Because I I know know Dave is is a character in in himself. (laughs) How, Sharose, tell us how, how is Dave on the red box, man? How, how is it working <laughs> with this guy, man? <laughs> uh, I, I can't say it on here, bro. It's, it's rated R stuff. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's not fair. I did keep my clothes on on the red box set. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's great. Uh, I remember in the, the, the last time we were together filming that scene in the red box, uh, we were basically being attacked by the, the there was a drone. Uh, so they, it wasn't being able to be fully controlled. So it was basically like attacking us. We were like dodging it all around. <laughs> and like Dave went and just caught it with his arm, with his hand. <laughs> no, that wasn't me, man. That, I, I appreciate the credit. I'd like to take that down as a story. But no, that was somebody else. I was worried about you because you're taller than me. <laughs> oh, I was yeah. worried about it hitting you in the head or something like that. <laughs> I mean, it almost did. There's, I think there's like a, a blooper scene where it almost like I was like dodging it because it was oh, yeah, like you right were, there. <laughs> you, you were. And I was keeping, I was like walking, but I was keeping my left eye on it, my right eye on where I was walking. Oh, I don't know what goodness. was going on. Wow. No, it was fun. We've, we've both worked with Ike multiple times and, and we yeah. really liked working with the guy. And when we talked about favorite roles, I, I, you know, I don't want to mention that one yet, but, um, yeah. you know, my, my character in that series. I, I decided was a combination of Indiana Jones and Scarface. Oh. And if you can imagine those two put together, that, that was fun to play. That, that does sound fun and interesting. Man, I mean, I've seen um, the episodes of it. I'm waiting, looking forward to what happens on it next. Um, Sharos, can you tell a little bit about your character? When, and not, no spoilers, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, I guess, so my... My character story is a little, you know, uh, off-centered. Where I, it's it starts from, it, it starts from the end, basically. Gotcha. So it goes backwards in a sense gotcha. uh, for me. Uh, but uh, basically, where uh, I, I've been working with Dave's character, uh, traveling the world uh, in search for this mysterious, you know, box. So we're trying to get it. So we have all these different uh encounters and uh uh, these situations that we're in together uh that that come up when we're trying to go after the box so uh these are very like uh strange but like very interesting and intriguing situations that were put in like then in in terms of like the environments the people that we're uh meeting with uh so yeah basically i'm like uh, dave's partner uh throughout his uh, Indiana Jones type career. Yeah. My my trusted associate, as we say. Yeah. In the, in the <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's funny, man. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, the rest of it, how the story uh, pans out, man. It's 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 good. I, I enjoy mm-hmm. it. It's quite a handful of people that's on there that I worked yeah. with before, yeah. and I have nothing. It's been a very there. ambitious project. Yeah. I, Ike is, uh, and he's all in on it, man. He he wants to make it as yep. great as it can be. Yeah. Why? Why not? I mean, go, go for it, man. Go yeah. For it. Of course, yeah. Go big or go home, you know. Yeah, exactly. So let's see. So let's talk about you guys' future um, projects. 
and we'll uh, get ready to close soon. So, uh, Shiroz, what you have? What do you have coming up? We know your your film has been so. Congratulations, uh, first and foremost. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. Mm-hmm. Congrats that you know it's been submitted to. Appreciate uh, it. But for that, that was amazing. I know you're just like excited for that, man. So, congrats again. So. Thank you. Thank you. We'll yeah, see. I mean that's uh, it's going to be very exciting in New York. Uh, I think it's my first festival that's been. Uh, accepted into a festival in New York so uh, that's very uh, cool to me so uh, we'll see how that goes fingers crossed but uh, other than that I have a a commercial coming out actually pretty soon maybe in the next uh, month or two uh, Mm -hmm. that I did for Toyota so that's going to be a national commercial streaming uh, print probably billboards and everything too so that's something I'm definitely looking forward to Uh, it, it was very fun uh, to film it uh, it's going to be like they're going to probably do some like cgi and like visual effects too to make it like even more crazy but yeah. uh yeah i'm definitely looking forward to that and uh other than that i've just you know I'm trying to like you know audition and audition and audition just right. you know keep pushing uh and just get the next best opportunities yeah, yeah. awesome man nice dave uh same question what you have uh coming up soon well, I'll make it quick. Um, it, it may be as many as five. Uh, now that I think about it, feature films coming up this fall, I'm starting to worry about my schedule in September, October. <laughs> but um, uh, I have a small role in HPD Breaking and Entering, which is the first feature film sponsored by the Houston Police Department. Mm-hmm. They got shooting locations at HPD facilities and Hobby Airport already locked in. Um, I am going to be playing in a Viking film shooting in Houston, if you can believe it, called Valhalla Awaits. Oh, yeah. uh, Directed by Villa Robles. I'm going to be playing the advisor to the king of Sweden. So the beard is going to get scruffier again before we get to that point. (laughs) Yep. Um, I was just this week, uh, talked to the producer just the other day. I was cast uh, as the billionaire father of three adult children in a dramedy sci-fi film called Restorage. It is about um, a broken family and a storage unit that magically fixes things that are broken. Objects at first, but you're wondering if it's going to be able to help fix the family too. And uh, and I'm also going to be in a uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer biopic. He was a famous uh, German anti-Nazi dissident uh, while Hitler was in power, I'm going to be playing a Gestapo agent because I speak German and talk about villains. I am also going to be off camera as the voice of Adolf Hitler giving one of his speeches. Whoa. Um, mm. And I've also been cast in uh, Bisson at the movie. It was supposed to film this uh, summer. It's yeah. been bumped a little bit, so I'm not sure yeah. the status on that, but that will be my third go around with Deal Breaker Studios with which is Jonathan Milton's company. Mm. He's recently moved to Atlanta himself, but his company is still going strong here. He's got a lot of young um, directors he's been bringing in in the pipeline, and uh, they're doing that. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention my current project, which you can all see next month if you're interested. I auditioned for my first community theater play in almost 20 years, and I was surprised not only to be cast, but to be given the lead role. It's a comedic melodrama called Egad, the Woman in White. I'm playing the villain, but it's a comedic villain. They do, the, they do a melodrama every summer at this theater. It's called Cast Theatrical in Rosenberg. And people are not just, incur- are not just allowed, but they're encouraged to boo the villain and throw popcorn at him. It is... Oh, it is it is a fun, I plan on getting a lot of popcorn uh, all over me during this thing because I am a totally irredeemable villain. There are nine other characters in this play and eight of them I insult, abuse, and at some point or another try to kill. I, I won't tell you if I'm successful in any of those attempts. You'll have to come see it, but I promise you it is a fun, fun show. It is happening every weekend in the month of August. So Fridays at 7.30, Saturdays at 7.30, Sunday matinee at 2.30, every one of the four weekends in August, same schedule. 
Cast Theatrical. You can find it online, Cast Theatrical Company in Rosenberg. Um, some of the performances are already half sold out or more. So um, please check it out. A lot of work is going into this. COVID has made the rounds through our cast, but hopefully it's done now that I am getting over it. I had to miss a couple of rehearsals this week, which was yeah. hard for me and probably hard for them. But, um, you know, it is so much fun. I promise you. This is not somebody saying, hey, man, come see the latest thing I'm doing. I think you'll like it. Not yeah. promise you you're going to like it. So EGAD, the woman in white, it cast theatrical if you get a chance in August. Thank you very much for allowing me to plug that. No problem. Uh, hey. No problem. No problem. Last question before you guys go, and then we'll do the drop and that will end it there. Um, Sharose, you can start off with this first. What's one thing that you wish, well, I'll say this. With up and coming actors that's just now getting into this field, what's some of the advice that you would give to them starting off? Starting off, okay. Well, uh, well, the first thing I would say is what I mentioned a little early, earlier is to just mm -hmm. go for it no matter what. Yeah. But uh, aside from that, I would say to, to I know, uh, especially for new uh, actors just learning about the industry and the business, it's uh, very scary. And because you don't really, especially if you don't have any connections, you don't know anyone, you don't know how yeah. it works. Uh, it's definitely... Uh, people are anxious about it and nervous. So I would say one beneficial thing is to obviously be careful, but just say yes to and just do uh, whatever opportunity comes. You know, don't be uh, picky about it in the beginning because that's how you make connections. That's how you meet people uh, in the industry. And especially like in Houston and in Texas, it's obviously the industry is smaller compared to other places. So you end up seeing a lot of the same people on sets. Like that's how uh, I got familiar with Dave and how we became yeah. friends because we uh, were meeting each other on uh, projects and uh, online. And that's how we uh, form the relationship and things like that so i would say definitely say yes to uh as much as you can but obviously while being careful and being aware of uh what's going on because you know obviously you don't want to be, end up in some bad situation right. but uh definitely take advantage of all the opportunities as much as you can because that's the only way to build up and gain that experience and uh improve yourself aside from taking classes and you know reading and doing all the that work on your own it's that uh on on the job experience that is very valuable and what you need when you're starting off mm -hmm. so i'd say definitely say yes as much as possible carefully though yes <laughs> I, I agree on that dave bring us on home man what's something that uh you wish you would have known first starting off that you do know now well, first of all, that's great advice, Rose. Uh, I, yes. I would agree 100% with everything you said, and I, I will not repeat it. I will uh, simply say from my perspective, what I emphasize the most, you know how they say, uh, how do you succeed in real estate? Mm -hmm. Three things, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. um, I say, if somebody says, how do you succeed, uh, succeed in acting? I'd say three things, training, training, training. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, uh, when I started booking a few roles on my own, I guess on the strength of the theater experience I had had, because I had been doing some acting, um, you know, I knew that wasn't enough. And I knew I had to get serious and get myself in classes. And I've been in classes almost constantly ever since. So that's uh, five years now. And uh, I've been to several different, uh, you know, acting coaches in Houston. I do some online. I know it costs money, but there's just no way around it at some point. Yeah. Like they say in anything, you got to spend money to make money and it's yeah. a journey and it takes time. Yeah. So find some, you know, look online to get some acting training if you are totally broke right now. But at some point you got to get your butt in the class. You got to suck it up and spend the money. And then you got to suck it up and spend the money to get some headshots, professional headshots. Yeah. And like Sharose said, I won't belabor it, but take, I, I call, I say, when I first started out, I can say this word, I was an acting whore. 
I took everything and anything, whether it paid or not. Then I got to the point where I had enough going on that I was able to say no to some things. And then I was saying, I'm not working for free anymore. And that doesn't mean I've made it. That just means I'm moving forward in my career and I know my value now. Um, so, but you got to keep working on it. I don't care how good the jobs you're getting are and how good you think you are. Nobody ever has it all figured out. Yeah. Uh, top three things, just to summarize, train, work hard, and be a good person to work with on set. Oh, and, um, and the fourth thing, have professional presentation with headshots and reels and online presence. But you got to be a good person to work with. You know, oh, yeah. I personally get, I, I don't want to brag, I'm just saying facts here. I get a lot of repeat business. I mentioned I, I'm, I'm about to work with Deal Breaker Studios for the third time. Mm -hmm. I'm working with uh, Ike for the third time. I've had others work with me again, refer me to their friends who have hired me sometimes without an audition. That does not mean I'm a great actor. It just means people like working with me. I try to be a team player on set. I have fun. I know when to cut up. I know when to shut up and get serious. And, uh, you know, I've heard people say it kind of bluntly, don't be an asshole. And that's a big part of it. Be on time, be prepared, be serious when you have to be. Focus on the work. Don't just be in it for yourself. Yeah. You know, all of those things that make people want to work with you, because mm -hmm. especially in a place like Houston, huge city, not a huge film community. Yeah. You, your reputation will proceed you. And I'm sure you can find some people out there that might say some uncomplimentary things about me, but it's not too many, not mm -hmm. too many. The vast majority of people you talk to about me will say something positive, And I work hard at that. It's not because I'm a great guy. It's just because I try to keep focused on what is going to do for my career and be the best person I can along the way. So, yeah, again, I got to apologize. Long it's, no, it's, it's cool. No, it's, no, no, but no, no. It's, I'm, it's I'm really cool. passionate about this stuff. Yeah. I've even put together some documents on my computer for people, young actors that ask me these questions. I've only been at it six years, but people that are just starting out, people ask me, how do you book so much or what's going on with you? And then I got answers. I can send them now. If anybody's interested, can I get my email address? Yeah, you can. Go, yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah. Totally. Totally free, no obligation. I literally, sincerely just want to help people like so many have helped me. And my email address is one Dave McLean at gmail.com. So the number one D A V E M C C L A I N at gmail.com. If you send me an email and put resources in the subject line, just introduce yourself. Anybody listening, I have some acting advice. I have a spreadsheet in which I keep track of everything I have ever submitted for or been submitted for. I just passed the 2000 mark recently on that spreadsheet. And it also keeps track of all my contacts I've made and all my um, all the things I've booked and the dates and the amount I got paid. Now, you're not going to get all that personal info, but I'll send you my <laughs> template. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in my website while I'm at it is davepro.info. I came up with something easy to remember, D-A-V-E-P-R-O dot I-N-F-O. Um, if anybody's uh, looking for a middle-aged white guy, um, <laughs> that that's one thing my wife told me when I got started. I told you she's always been very supportive. I, I could not, I would not have the career I have without her love, support, and help. She says, hey, every movie needs a middle-aged white guy. And I've yeah. done several projects in which I am the only white man in the movie. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I, I love working with everybody. And uh, like I said, people seem to enjoy working with me. So I'm just, I'm living the dream, man. I really am. I haven't won that Oscar yet, but I am living the dream. I love it. It's coming, coming soon. Yeah. yeah and man. thank you. And I, I, I thank you guys again for this opportunity for letting me ramble on so much about my passion. Um, I'm looking forward to the next time I get to work with Chiroz and with James and Mike. I, I feel like I've met you before. But I, I can't say 100% either way because I've literally met thousands of people over the last six years in this business. No, no, no. We met, um, at, you was at the Mixer. At the, okay. You was at the Mixer. That's when I met James. That was the first okay. time mm. I met James. It was the Mixer. Yeah. I, I was pretty sure, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I, I get this all the time. People 
walk up to me. They start talking to me. I obviously know them, but I hate it. I got to ask them to remind me where we met. Because <laughs> yeah, there's just it been was, too many was, miles that have gone by. It was funny when you say you didn't know how to start out, because that's how I was. I didn't know how to start or anything. And now mm -hmm. I just came across the mixer. I downloaded the app, and the first thing that popped up was this, this mixer. So I went. That's when I met James. And then years yep. passed by. I got on a couple of projects because of James, and we started this podcast. So the other guy, uh, he's on a vacation, but all three of us started this podcast, and we, but we all met at the mix. That's awesome. That, that's great. And Mike, I got to give you a little bit of a hard time before we leave. I'm on is, that, is that I'm a steal? Is that a waiting. Steelers jersey? I've been you? waiting for you for a long you time. That too, huh? <laughs> I feel like we have a bond. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm up in yeah. my man cave. I got some. <laughs> I've got some uh, movie posters <laughs> over my right shoulder of stuff yeah, I've been in. You know, <laughs> my left shoulder, you see my brown <laughs> stuff. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, and I seen it. I seen it when I when he first popped on. I said, "That's a Browns fan." <laughs> oh, yeah. You notice the orange, the inside, and the brown on the walls. The inside yeah. of my man cave is painted like a Browns helmet. You got your man cave, mm. and I got mine too. Oh, uh, there it is. <laughs> That's okay. I ain't mad at you. Some of my best friends are from Pittsburgh. Seriously, we always got a fun rivalry going back and forth. Oh. Yeah, we do. We're, we're not like all the other guys. We don't naturally hate each other. It's just, hey, man, we we just very supportive of our team. I'm going to Pittsburgh, actually, in September for my birthday. Um, oh, mm -hmm. great. Well, happy early birthday to yeah, you. Yeah, happy early Enjoy birthday. Enjoy your time in Pittsburgh. I do get there from time to time. Like I said, I, I, I still have friends there from when I went to college in Pennsylvania. And uh, yeah, I always look forward to those uh, those Pittsburgh Cleveland games. Yeah, you. I, I will say this: uh, uh, Browns fans are real fans of the NFL. For mm -hmm. you guys to be fans of the Browns, yeah. <laughs> oh, that that takes some tenacity and stubbornness, man. I tell you, really <laughs> fan, you ever meet a Browns fan? You know, a lifelong Browns fan. You know, you have met a person you can depend on. Yes, you can. <laughs> but I'll say this. I'll say this about Steelers fans. You know, they got a lot of pride in their history and they deserve it. But when we lost our team in 99, when our team moved to Baltimore and became that other team that I will not mention. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't like yeah, because we both hate them. Um, <laughs> I remember the Pittsburgh fan base was the loudest in support of Cleveland. Yeah. They did not want to see us lose our team either. And even though other cities have lost teams, I can say this, Cleveland is the only one that lost its team but was able to keep the name, the colors, the history, and the records. The only city that can right. say that. And right. that tells you something about the, the roots of the NFL in Cleveland and the pride Browns fans have in their team. Right. And one of these days, one of these days, one we're going to lift that trophy, man. One of these days, I'm not going to lie to you, my heart dropped because the Bengals almost pulled it off. I'm so thankful for Aaron Donald because I did not want to see the Bengals win. I'm, honestly, it's, it's really this that other team that we don't like. We're, we're cool. The Browns, we're cool. The Browns, we're cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, football season's right around the corner. I can't wait. Oh, man, yes, we're going gonna to get back on here and talk about this again. But, um, but man, Jim, I wish we could keep going and talking. Um, but um, before we go – um, Shiraz, go ahead and tell us where the viewers can find you at on social media. Yeah, so uh, my Instagram is at blazin underscore rose, B-L-A-Z-I-N underscore R-O-Z-E. Uh, Facebook, uh, Shar Rose Khan. Uh, Twitter is also blazin rose and uh, IMDB, Shar Rose Khan. All righty then. Nice, nice. And Dave, I already know you, you gave your information, your email and everything. And of course, we can find you at a uh, well, I'll let you do that part. Where can we find you at, Dave? <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, um, uh, I'm also on IMDb. Another one of those things that I, I just was totally thrilled about when it first happened. Uh, you know, I, I was like, oh, if I could ever get paid for acting just once. And then it happened the first time. And then I was like, oh, man, if I could get it ever, ever on IMDb before I die, I got on for my third film. Um, so I am on IMDb. I am Dave McClain parentheses Roman numeral four because I'm not the only Dave McLean on there I'm definitely not the only Dave McLean on Facebook it's Dave McLean point seven five four 
Um, I also have uh, actor Dave uh, is uh, my professional Facebook page or Dave McLean, actor, voiceover writer. It's on there. Um, I'm on Instagram as cleveman 66. There, there you go again, Mike. That, that's what you me- think it means. C-L-E-V-E-M-A-N-6-6, the year I was born. I uh, don't do much with Instagram, though, because I'm older than you guys. I haven't quite uh, quite uh, started grappling with that yet. All I have to do is echo my Facebook posts at the moment. Gotcha. But, um, but yeah, I, and, and one of these days I'm going to get on TikTok and do some crazy stuff there. I just haven't gotten around to that one yet. Oh. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. But, you know, the main thing is... Uh, I, I, I'm working in Houston, all over Eastern and Central Texas, uh, fortunately, once in Atlanta, uh, hoping to expand my net further. So, you know, anybody watching and listening, you know, I, I can tell you and promise you that I'm passionate about every product, every project I do, whether I have one line or whether I'm the lead. It doesn't matter to me. I've literally said to directors who were apologetic for not giving me a bigger role, I said, man, I want to serve your project in wherever you think I fit best. Gotcha. And I mean that sincerely. You can't always be the lead and you can't yeah. even always have a line. You know, if, if it's something you believe in and want to do and they want to work with you, you want to work with them, go for it, man. Yeah. Especially if it's a quality project. Come on. What are we? What, we're in this thing to have fun, right? If you're in it just to make money or just to win the Oscar, you are wasting your time because that happens to such a small percentage of the people. And it is so, so much of it goes on. It's beyond your control. You can't make that your primary motivation. You got to be in it because you got a passion for it. You want to do good work, work with good people, make an impact on the world, entertain all that good stuff. And if that other stuff happens to you, that's bonus. Just enjoy the journey, man. Enjoy the journey. Love it, love it, love it, man. You guys dropped yeah. some gems today, man. We appreciate both of you guys, man. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Oh, I appreciate you having us on here and the opportunity. Thank you. Abs- so absolutely. Great to talk to you guys. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time, but no, you no, know, no, no, this, no, is, this has been fun. Yeah, this no. has been fun. No, we, all, we always love talking to everyone that's a part of this community and getting um, more information and help about it. So it, it, it helps out us uh, so a lot. Uh, Helps us out a lot, and we love to have conversations about it because we're passionate about it as well, too. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah, all four know. of us are. I know that, and I'm looking forward to the chance I get to meet all you guys again. The The great thing yeah, about working with so many different people is I've got to work with so many wonderful people. The bad thing about it is I make friends, and I don't get to see them all as much as I want to anymore because now there's so many of them. Oh, man, it's a lot of us, man. <laughs>